time to get this day started. Yeah, no rules, just right. the seal kit my god $69.81 for a few rubbers it costs a whole lot to keep your shaft from leaking yeah a few rubbers $69.81 but I guess the consequences if your shaft continues to leak is going to cost you more money than that so you got to go ahead and protect that shaft Oh, hell. I don't have a hitch. I guess I'm not moving that. In the musical truck game that we played last week, I forgot to grab the hitch, so I guess I'm going to the hardware store and pulling the hitch off of my other truck. What's that saying? Poor planning on your part does not make an emergency on my part. Ah, man, I thought I had this day planned out well, but I screwed it up. Ah, uh, yes, there it is. hitches stolen out of our parking lot before off of employee vehicles so let me go tell my daughter I took the hitch so she doesn't think someone stole it second times the charmer correct moving their big equipment today and they can't get these low boys into the farm I guess so he's gonna back this low boy about a uh, not quite a half a mile I guess to the end of the farm road and they've got the excavator sitting there waiting to load on here hopefully they'll let me go by uh, before they start loading when they unloaded some of this equipment a couple of months ago, my daughter got caught up in the traffic jam. Uh, she was going to work one morning and um, got to the end of the road and had to wait 10 or 15 minutes for them to get everything loaded up and out of her way. They've got the uh, excavator out here already and they're bringing a big loader out as well so i'll wait for them to go by if you thought this would be an easy job pulling the cylinder off from inside the grain tank uh 
you thought wrong. So this pin is moving, so I'll be able to drop it down now. I've got the key out. This one, I'm having a difficult time getting the key out, but that's that's okay. The problem is this pin is not moving. 30 years of dust and grain going into these joints has made this very tight. And I've put a pipe wrench on the bottom. I can't move it. Something tells me I'm going to have to put some heat on here. This cylinder pushes this arm all the way around to move the auger out. Uh, but let me keep beating on it. I'm wondering if there's a little bit of pressure on that auger, and that's why I can't get that pin out. Okay, I moved that auger a little bit, and Well, I think the next part is uh, to heat this block up to get that pin out. I don't see any other way to do that. Uh, so let me go get the torches get a water hose and put up here just to be on the safe side and uh, let's try to heat that up. I've got a wire up there but I'm not heating this. I'm only heating that so let's give it a shot. Okay, just like that, it's off. Before I grab that thing. Yes, I know, I was worried about rain getting on the combine and here I am spraying water in it. But this is a controlled dump, unlike rain. While I'm this far, I think I'm gonna take this hose off and see if my local hose guy has the ends to repair this. Right there on that end, that's gonna be the next place to leak because all the, the weight of the grain sits down on there all the time. So I'll take it off and see if I can get a new one made. All right, now let's uh, take this cylinder out and see how difficult it is to replace these seals. Looks like a snap ring on here. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That's why you always need to wear protection because it's going to go everywhere. You know, that end is still a little bit warm. Watch me get to the end and turn the butter bowl over. My butter bowl may not be large enough. There's this other retaining ring right behind this snap ring. I've got to shove that past the snap ring, that, that internal snap ring, and then that'll come out. There we go. We are learning together here. Now this nut has to come off so I can take all of this off. All right, let me uh, take a picture of this so I know 
which way it has to go back on there. This is the main seal that's bad, right, right in there. Oh my God. I can feel the grit and dirt in there. Wow. I'm surprised it has not gone bad sooner. Okay, put the new snap ring on there right now so you don't forget it. All right, that's on there. I've got a lot of, a lot of pieces here. All right, I'm not wasting SD card space uh, while, I, while I'm putting these seals in, so I'll turn you off. Okay, less than 15 minutes later, I've got these seals uh, in here. I replaced this and this. Okay, so that, that, that. The wiper seal is replaced. The inside seal, which was the most important one. That's the one leaking. These two have been replaced. Okay, I think... It's ready to go back together. Put a little bit of lube around there so it will slide on my shaft. Lube is always important when you're dealing with the shaft and rubbers. Some more lube. There we go. Of course, all of this lube has now come off onto the shirt. Let's put some more on there. Okay. Okay, uh, should be easy putting this back on. Let me get that hose replaced, uh, fill it with uh, hydraulic oil, and I think it should be ready to go. Okay, you see that? That is turning, but there are no soybeans leaving out of that hopper. That's because something has busted up on the top. man what am I gonna do here uh, I'm just gonna have to go get some wrenches and climb up there and pull it apart uh, and unfortunately this auger is now full of beans all the way up there so it makes it very difficult to move it to crank it up pull it away and then let it down so it's at ground level so we can work on it I just hope it's not the shaft that has rung off. Oh boy. One of those days, isn't it? Okay, now I kind of recall what happened here the last go round. This shaft rung off, rung off right here. It was the same size as this, and so there was a nub on here about an inch and a half wide. That thing rung off, so we had enough shaft 
in here to shove the whole auger up to us about an inch. I got a larger cog, a larger hub for the cog, put it on there and then we tack welded it around the uh, end of it there and that tack weld broke. It was bubble gum weld that I had put on there. So I think I'm gonna call Jeffrey. He's got a portable welder that we can probably pull up on top of this grain bin and he can weld this thing uh, right here in place. So this isn't too bad. It could have been worse. Okay, I've got a plan. Okay, got the new hose. Let me climb up on here one more time and get this thing on. Let's see what happens here. And it's going out. All right, let's press the button to go in. And I see no leaks. Okay, let's uh, go to the field and cut some soybeans. I think Jeffrey just sent a text to me, let me know. Oh heck. Oh heck. Uh, Jeffrey doesn't have his 110 volt welder anymore. He's got a 220. Wait a minute. I have got a 220 plug there. Uh, that that could still work. Hold on. Looks like I've got to take the auger down from the bin and we're going to have to take it up to the shop where we have 220 power. Uh, he's got the large plug on his welder and I only have the smaller 220 uh, outlet with an extension cord at the bin. So, man, I was trying to avoid taking that auger down because with it full of soybeans, oh man, it's probably, I don't know, 51 feet at 8 inches. You do the math on how many bushels that is. Maybe a thousand pounds extra, I don't know. Alright, I guess with some help, I can get it down. So, uh, I'm going to take the combine to the field, get the header hooked up, and then roll back over to the farm and uh, deal with that auger. Alright, we're getting her down off of the bin. Jeffrey decided to uh, just use the front end loader. We got a pallet on the forks, lift up and put the whole hopper uh, on there and strap it down and now we can move it up to the shop. All right, I think I've got this shaft cleaned up enough that we can get that welded up. You can see the rig we had here. So I'm gonna have to empty this. I'll empty it into the truck once we get it welded up. So we don't have all that weight to put back on top of the bin. go a little bit that way. Things are back together and we are putting soybeans in the bin again. Sun is starting to set. 
moon is already risen. Well, no soybeans cut today. This, this was a wasted day. This wasn't my plan when I woke up this morning, but plans are made to be broken. Chihuahua. What a day. So, apparently that was one of my grandfather's sayings. He would come home at the end of the day, hang his hat behind the kitchen door, and sit down in his chair and say, Chihuahua. What a day. And that has been the case for me today. Got absolutely zero accomplished. In the middle of all of this with the auger going uh, bad and getting the seal kit in the combine uh, unload auger cylinder, uh, one of my tenants calls that lives down at the farm and said, hey, there are a couple of outlets in the apartment that don't have power going to them. So I go in there and look at all the breakers in the box and none of the breakers are tripped and it just didn't make sense on the outlets that were working and those that were not working and the lights that were working and the lights that weren't working. So then I went downstairs where uh, my daughter lives started checking there and there were some funny things going on there but these are two separate panels I called uh, the guy that's been doing some electrical work for my daughter at the house he walks me through some things and he says this doesn't make sense finally I go out to the meter and to the electrical meter on the side of the house and there's there's no lights on that meter. I said, well, hell, this is the utility company's problem. This is Smeco's problem. I'm going to have to call Smeco. I don't see anything on the on the meter. No lights. It was very strange. So I checked our other two meters um, on the farm, and yeah, they they're lit up. They have words or lights on them or something going on. I said, well, this is a Smeco issue. In the meantime, Jeffrey is pulling up. So he's trying to get the auger out of the bin. So I go down to help him. I don't call Smeco. Well, one of Smeco's trucks starts pulling in the driveway. Apparently with these new smart meters, they know something is going on right away. So they dispatch the call. So they come in, come to find out they had been to the house last week. Uh, one of the, um, one of the lines apparently, um, uh, went bad and they went up on the pole and fixed something well I guess that didn't fix it permanently they had to go up on the pole again today they were talking about maybe they had to replace the line from the pole to the house but no in the end they just replaced uh, uh, some lugs up on the pole for the wire feed going into the house so I spent an hour scratching my head and worried wondering what the hell was going on with that and that was a speco issue so chihuahua what a day i hope i don't have another one of these for a while it, it's just been crazy i i cut exactly well i won't say exactly i cut about 50 foot of soybeans today and that was only to to get the combine into the field, get it out of the driveway, we moved to the new farm, so I, I couldn't block up the the property owner's driveway, so I cut exactly uh, around about 50 feet of soybeans today. That was it. All right, but everything is ready for tomorrow. Truck is unloaded. The combine is greased, fueled, repaired, ready to go. The sun is supposed to shine. The tenant has power in the house all electrical outlets are now working the auger is working so let's see how bad it's going to be tomorrow uh it's going to be more than one adult beverage tonight i already know that it's two or three i think i'm going to stop at the store and get a six pack of ginger ale to go with my adult beverage all right that's all i got for now so i'm going to say see oh my god so to top the day off, I go into DG to get my ginger ale and 
remembered I needed ice cream as well. I'm out of ice cream. And their freezers are out of service. So there is no ice cream. Oh my God. I'm an ice cream fanatic. I need my ice cream and they have no ice cream. So the day just keeps getting better. But hey, I, I get up to pay for my ginger ale and the guys, the cashier says, hey, how's it going? I said, it's just been one of those days. I said, but tomorrow is a new day. And he said, you know, rainbows only come after the storm. Just simple words like that to brighten the day. The rainbows can only come after the storm. So there we go. Hopefully there will be rainbows and unicorns tomorrow. All right. I guess I will survive without ice cream. All right. I swear to you. This is going to be the last time I say, see ya.